In this video, we'll cover the basics of NTP and some of its uses. NTP is used to maintain consistent time across networks. It's configured on a server that's been configured with an authoritative time source, like an atomic clock or GPS. The cool thing about NTP is that it's incredibly accurate. Instead of using time zones, NTP uses Coordinated Universal Time, or UTC. Each device is responsible for converting the time to its local time zone. NTP sends time data through UDP packets to all connected devices, and the devices can be synced up within two milliseconds of each other. We can implement a single NTP server on a smaller network, but on a larger one, we might have multiple NTP servers spread out across the globe. We organize this using what are called stratum levels. Our first level is called stratum zero. This is the authoritative time source that we use to configure the NTP server with. Stratum one is the NTP server that's attached to the authoritative time source. Each subsequent NTP server connected on adds a new stratum level. Now, because there will always be a slight delay between stratum levels as packets are sent back and forth, each level calculates the amount of time it takes for the NTP packets to travel and adjusts its internal clock so it can maintain an accurate time. Usually, a domain controller is configured to act as the organization's NTP server, and it reaches out to a public NTP server to update its time. In this scenario, the domain controller would be at stratum level 2. Public NTP servers are also used by individual users to update their computer times. For example, Microsoft maintains a list of public NTP servers that devices can reach out to in order to automatically update their clocks. Keeping an accurate clock across your network is important for a few different reasons. The first one is event logging. Whenever anything out of the ordinary happens on a device, a log entry is created. By default, these event logs are stored on the device itself, but going around to each device would be very time consuming. Instead, we usually send event logs to a central server where they can be easily viewed. Being able to accurately determine the time that events happen is critical. If devices are spread across different time zones and the logs are all tagged with the device's local time, determining the order of events becomes a very daunting task. NTP tags each logged event with the same UTC timestamp, making it easy to determine each event's time and order. This makes assigning priority much less complicated. There are also instances where a program won't function properly if the time is wrong. For example, if a program is performing an update, but the time on the device is wrong or set in the past, the update could fail and cause all sorts of issues. Time drift is when a system's clock begins to get off by a few seconds or minutes. When time drift occurs, NTP has two methods for dealing with it. If the time is only off by a few seconds, NTP slews the time by a few milliseconds to get it back on track. Slewing is a slower, more methodical method of correcting time, but the risk of problems occurring are much less. If the time somehow gets off by quite a bit and it'll take too long to correct by slewing, MTP slams, or hard resets, the time back to the proper state. This is a quick fix, but the issue is that some programs don't react kindly to it and end up experiencing other issues. That'll wrap up our lesson on network time protocol. In this lesson, we first went over the basics of NTP and how we can use it to maintain an accurate and consistent time across all our networks. Then we looked at the other ways in which NTP is useful to us, like for event logging and reducing time drift.